Hello and welcome to the Story Castle, your refuge in the wild world of writing and publishing. And in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you a month-by-month -month detailed breakdown of exactly how much money I earned from Skillshare courses in 2023. And in addition to looking at the numbers, I'm going to be giving you a little bit of context behind the work and time and energy that went into creating those courses and wrap the whole video up with a bit of a breakdown on the critical question of whether or not I think Skillshare is a platform that is still viable and worth your time and energy as a teacher or content creator in 2024 moving forward. The Skillshare platform has certainly had its ups and downs over the past few years. It seemed during the pandemic years like everybody was all over Skillshare all the time because we were all stuck at home and a lot of us were looking for ways to make better use of our time and people got really into courses. I personally love Skillshare. I use it as a consumer all the time. I've learned all kinds of really interesting things from software tutorials to uh, mindset classes and time management and all kinds of good stuff. So I really appreciate it as a platform. But it has to be said uh, that it has been a bit of a roller coaster ride over the past few years as Skillshare has continued to adjust its payment model for teachers, uh, for the way that it sort of accounts for your watch time, um, the weightings that it puts behind things, and it's not always 100% clear how that is affecting your monthly payouts. So I think it'll be really good to take a closer look at at least my experience as a fairly small creator on the platform. First, a tiny bit of context before we look at the numbers. I have so far created four courses on Skillshare, each on a different aspect of writing and writing craft. They all fall um, about the same length, about an hour to an hour and a half worth of uh, course content, but between um, concept creation and outlining and making the scripts and then filming and then editing and then posting everything, uh, it certainly took me a fair bit more than that per course, which I will get into when we look at the details. But one thing I think is important to name up front is that all of these results are the outcome of placing my courses on Skillshare without doing any uh, external promotion through social media and so on, other than occasionally maybe making a quick mention of my content either here on my YouTube channel or to my uh, news email newsletter because I kind of figured if I'm going to have to do all the work to promote and drive traffic to my courses, I really should do that through my own storefront and build that out on my website. But in the meantime, I wanted to find out whether or not Skillshare is worth it if all you're going to do is create the content and do it well, like produce good, well-created, competitive content, but not do a whole lot of external advertising and just let Skillshare's internal organic traffic uh, carry you through. So we're going to take a look at that and find out whether or not that uh, was successful. Okay, so here we are in my Skillshare teacher dashboard and let's start by taking a look at some top level numbers. As you can see, I earned just a little bit over $2,000, $2,033.33 in the approximately year. Uh, that I have had courses here on the platform. A total of 762 students, almost 40,000 um, minutes watched and 21 reviews, which is still baffling to me in some ways, like super cool and exciting to know that um, that many people have enjoyed and benefited from some of the courses that I've created. Uh, these are my four classes here. Um, I have Writing Vivid Descriptions, uh, Write More, Write Faster, which is all about how to increase your writing output. Um, writing Unforgettable Characters, which was the first course I created, and then Nailing Your Narrative, which is a plot point breakdown of a three-act narrative structure, which has been by far my most popular course. Um, about half of my total, a little over half of my total students have come from this one class. So let's get into the month-by-month -month breakdown. Um, like I said, I, I, it's approximately a year. I actually launched my first course right at the tail end of November 2022. So in the first month that I released, uh, which is my course on writing better characters, uh, I earned $16 and then $32 and then uh, $14. Now you'll see all three of these months, I just had the one course up and so uh, barely, barely any activity there. Uh, but then starting here in February of 2023 uh, is a big jump from $14 to $175.50. Um, now, I think a large part of the reason for this is that this is also the month that I launched this YouTube channel. Um, so I was getting a fair amount of newer traffic to my channel. A lot of my existing fans from my 
author email were checking out my channel and watching content. And so um, because I referenced my Skillshare classes a couple times and I have a link uh, featured on my channel, I think because I was getting the most overall traffic to my channel in these three months, um, you'll notice that it went up and by far my highest total month on the platform was in April of 2023. I made $412.58, which was looking really good. Um, and this is also when I released my Nail Your Narrative class, which like I said, my second class has been by far my most popular class. And so I do think that because I got a bit more traffic to the class towards the beginning of when it released, um, some, I think it was featured uh, in a couple of mailings from Skillshare internal uh, in these months, which again, I think is a part of the reason behind some of these higher numbers. So that was looking really good. Um, and then in May, uh, things kind of slowed down. I did release uh, my next two classes, uh, in one in, I think, June and then another one in August. Uh, but you'll notice they didn't really make a giant uh, impact. And I also, like I said, I didn't really promote them because I was trying to see uh, how things would go if I created good content and put it up on the platform. Uh, but things from here tended to follow a pretty steady trajectory. I earned, I would call it an average of about $130 on average per month from May 23 through um, November 23. December was slow, but that's pretty standard on Skillshare because everybody's super busy in December and has a lot on their plates. I'll be interested to see um, now if January into February of this year kind of returns back or if this is the start of maybe even a bit more of a dip. Um, so there's a couple different ways that I think you can look at this data. Um, one way is to say, well, about 120 some, 130 some dollars a month, like that's gas money, I guess. Like it's nice. It's certainly not anything to live off of. Um, it's definitely not enough money to make a big impact. So would that be an argument for saying that Skillshare really hasn't been worth it? Because the four classes that I created, I would say on average, they took me about 60 to 80 total hours, maybe per course, 60-ish, um, I think is probably about right. Um, between outlining and then filming and then the editing takes a long time if you're doing it well for all the different videos. Um, so it's a decent chunk of hours. Uh, but I did the math and by my estimate, by the end of the year, this 2000 and some dollars, I would say that I earned something in the ballpark of about $30 an hour for my time. So if you look at it that way, $30 an hour is not shabby. I mean, that is, you know, again, it's not retirement money, but it's not a bad living, a, a bad income on the hours that I invested, especially when you consider to me, the biggest factor is that I stopped working on courses right around uh, June, I finished the last of my four courses and, and then kind of released the ones that I had finished in the through the summer here. So all of this, from July through December is just residual income. I was earning this, you know, getting a little bit of a deposit into my uh, business bank account every month, and I wasn't really doing any work. So the fact that yes, I put a lot of work into it on the front half of the year, um, but that work paid for itself over the second half of the year. And there doesn't seem to be any indication that that won't be the case again for this whole year, uh, 2024 moving forward. So hypothetically, if I made, let's say even another thousand or two, like the same 2000 or even half of that, like another thousand or $2,000, all of that money would be residual off of work that I have already done and I'm not investing any further hours into, which I think if you look at it that way um, is a pretty good deal. Before I dive into my final thoughts, I would love to know from you, do you have an active Skillshare subscription? Do you use it regularly as a learning platform? Let me know in the comments whether it's a space that you routinely utilize for your personal development or skill set development. And if you found this video helpful or informative, please take a second to drop a like on it to help other people find it as well. But final thoughts, do I think that Skillshare is a worthwhile platform for content creators? 
Uh, yes and no. <laughs> yes, in the sense that it's a, it does work. Like as you saw from my numbers, even with little to no promotion, I have gotten regular, consistent monthly views, which I have to assume are being largely driven by internal organic traffic, other than potentially you know the occasional cross traffic from people who watch my videos here on the YouTube channel, since I do keep the link to my Skillshare courses in my descriptions and so on. Um, but overall, I think it has produced a better result than if I hadn't made the courses in the first place. However, I will say if it is if making courses and teaching and doing educational content is something that you are planning to take seriously and do a lot of and are looking to develop into a significant income, then I think at that point it is probably worth the time and energy to go all the way and create your content on your own platform and you know develop a website develop a mailing list do social media stuff i think skillshare is a great solution for people like me who have other focuses and aren't planning to invest significant time and energy into promoting their material oh, but if you are going to be doing that uh like i said i think it's probably worth breaking out to do that on another platform or, or um, space of your own with that said, I, like I said, I have four courses on Skillshare. I have 12 more planned because there's a lot of different aspects of the writing process that are worth talking about. And I will be curious to see over the course of this year and next year as I move into then circling back and beginning to create and post more courses there, uh, whether or not that produces an upswing. Because if I could get my courses to uh, a little bit of a higher consistent monthly income, uh, especially residual ongoing, as so far my content has been, then I think at that point, it would be very worthwhile and a nice kind of support to my overall writing and teaching career. Finally, if you are a writer and you're interested in learning more about different aspects of the writing craft, then I will post a link here, a uh, title card, and down in the description to a couple of my videos here on my YouTube channel that get into some of the smaller slices of the larger content that I have taught on my Skillshare class. And I will also be including a link to get a free trial subscription of Skillshare so that you could take uh, any, any of my courses that are interesting to you if you want to go deep into the weeds and get the full enchilada. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more deep dives and analysis of your favorite books, movies, and stories here every week.